everybody. Let's get started. Got a lot to do. So uh, third year of the Font Purchasing Habits Survey, super exciting, and it's bigger than ever. So this year we got 15,745 responses. Huge deal. It's great. Uh, and for those of you that care about this stuff, uh, this is some really awesome data with some really statistically significant results. So if we take a population of 17 million, this number puts us at a confidence level of 99% and a confidence interval of one. And what this means for the rest of us is that if 50% of the survey respondents choose an answer, then we can be 99% sure that between 49% and 51% of the population at large would choose the same answer. This is great. Of course, I'll take this moment to say that this is a convenient sample. These are people who are self-reporting. So this is how research goes, but really thrilled about this result. Most research is done at a 95% level. This year, we had some great survey sponsors, which allowed the survey to get into the eyes of a lot more people. Of course, everybody loves free fonts, and they got 15 of them. So this is the fact that we got 15,000 results is great because Yes, we got 15 fonts for free, but there was also 56 questions in this survey. It was a big, big, long commitment, so great. Uh, we've also seen some tremendous growth over the years, 506% since last year. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to answer the question, what do customers want? And the really nice short answer is fonts, which is great. Like, <laughs> That's what we want to hear, uh, but the long answer is more complicated. And so I'll talk about demographics, year-over-year -year comparisons, customer segments, purchasing habits, and my new favorite category, font feelings. So we'll get straight to it. I don't think enough white people took the survey this year. Uh, might want to work on that. Uh, we see we have a normal, normally distributed skill level. so looks quite right. Uh, one to 10, uh, so 55% say that they purchase one to 10 fonts a year. Okay. Uh, average age is 41.6 years. 69% uh, of respondents are professional users, and I won't make a joke there. Uh, and then we've got 52% male, 39% female. That could be a little better, but we take what we can get. 46% uh, of the respondents were from the USA and responses came in from 119 countries altogether. So I asked the question, please select the primary field in which you use fonts, and 57% of people are in graphic design. And of those 57%, 41% of those are freelancers. So this is some really interesting information about kind of people who are really truly using fonts, and that's, that's great. So 26% are small agency studio of one to 10 people, and you can see kind of how it goes from here. Of course, all these results will be posted online after the talk, so if you're panicking, don't worry, you can see this later. Uh, in 2017, we also had 57% graphic designers, so it's pretty consistent. So this question is asking about distributors used. So please select all of the suppliers you have used to pay for or download fonts in the past six months, and they could pick as many as they want. So these are the top eight in 2018, and the top eight in 2017. Not a ton of change. This year, I changed this question up and separated Adobe Typekit subscription from Adobe Typekit Marketplace. Last year, I just had Adobe Typekit, so that was some interesting information. Um, so this is everyone, except for maybe four that I cut off the tail who had less than 150 responses. Um, so this is interesting, right? But it's not super helpful to us until we look at how this compares to site traffic data. So this is from SEM Rush, which is a free online uh, tool anyone can use to find information about different websites. So if I did a good job with my survey, if we have a decent response group, we should see a similar shift, like a similar distribution. We almost got there. Of course, we can't get data on Google fonts because fonts.google.com is a subdomain. 
free font websites is no data because that's a category, right? And future fonts, we don't have data because it's dot XYZ, but you know, with what we've got, uh, this makes sense. The one thing I would have liked to see, have seen is more customers coming from Invato because we've got lots of site traffic there and very little customers coming from there. Um, and I'll take this opportunity to say that if you're selling fonts, this is information you should look up, right? Like there's no reason not to know this stuff. This will help you make decisions about kind of where you want to sell and things like that. So um, I will move on to the next one. Uh, we saw that people say that they use an average of four different distributors, and this was down from five last year. Uh, so let's see. Who all is actually a type designer, right? So survey about fonts. So 29% of people say they know a type designer, and only 8% say that they are a type designer, which is really great. Uh, 2017, 13% were type designers. 2017, 43% said they knew a type designer. So I'm very happy with these numbers going down because we really want to get to the heart of people who maybe aren't so familiar with our industry. So then we've got some more questions. Uh, shockingly, 21% of people do not know if they use software where they can access open type features. That's crazy. So anyway, sorry. Uh, I use fonts for a subscription service. 44% say yes. 73% of people purchase a music or video service. And 67% say that they are aware that Adobe Typekit is included in Creative Cloud. And so let's see what font buyers care about. And as with last year, number of styles is number one, followed by number of glyphs, kerning, alternate spacing, license types available, and ligatures. This year, we had two new categories I added in, license types and the foundry that designed the typeface. Didn't change much other than that. So when we talk about font evaluation, so that was the features of a typeface. Now let's talk about how people shop, right? People want to see the entire character set, they want to type out their own words and phrases. They're really interested in ligatures and alternates. They'd love to compare fonts, and they want to see images. Last year, pretty much the same. So new question about licensing. People are really needing desktop licenses. Um, people, these, this group is spending money themselves, um, downloading free fonts, getting money from their client. And 4% even admitted that they don't pay for fonts, if you know what I mean, winky face. Uh, so this is the distribution of how much people are spending. It's pretty, like, it's, this is what you would expect, right? This, this makes sense. So people who manage fonts, right? How are people managing fonts, right? 29% of people buy a font manager. That's a lot in my mind. But 64% uh, are just using standard that comes with their computer. So of course, we have these questions. You've seen them all before. There's a statement on one side. You've got to select how much you agree with it. For our purposes, we take that. We take, put these into numbers. And if you'll notice, that neutral is three. So that's the mean. So we've got some interesting information here. Um, last year, some changes. Some more information. I gotta go fast, because we're running out of time. Now let's talk about pricing. These are the same as last year. We have a workhorse family and a script family. Average price people are willing to spend on these categories. Dropped from last year. This year I also only took responses from US because we had such a high percent of respondents from Japan, right? And they have very different currency uh, structure, so. 78% of people say they do not associate discounting with lower quality products. Only 8% say that fonts at 90% off or more are lower quality. And this is all changed from last year. Now, font feelings. Let's get into it. All right, people think fonts are sexy still. Uh, hasn't changed. And now let's talk about variable font feelings. This is this year. All right, this might look familiar to you because not much has changed, which 
Honestly, there is no statistically significant change here. So if we're interested in promoting variable fonts, we've got more work to do. 27, 2017 results between type designers and everyone else. A little different. Still pretty different this year. Uh, so I asked four survey statements about variable fonts that are kind of might, might indicate an interest. I often customize fonts after buying them by changing small details about the letters and design software. 38% disagree. It's great because this is usually prohibited by licenses, but you know. Uh, when using a font, I sometimes wish I could make the letters just a little taller or wider or make the font just a little bolder or lighter. All right, that's kind of what variable fonts do, so people sort of want that. Um, the top one, there's very, there's nothing we can really learn from this. It's very normally distributed. And, but people do care about innovation, so. Now let's talk about font company feelings. I asked this awesome new question, slaved over these uh, different words here, coming up with these. Um, and we got some really interesting results. Google fonts, accessible, monopoly, democratic. Creative market, trendy, friendly, and accessible. My fonts, accessible, friendly, trendy. Monotype, historic, authority, elite. Adobe, monopoly, authority, accessible. And I double checked all of this. <laughs> um, now, of course we wanna know what type designers think, right? Like what do type designers think compared to everyone else? And in general, they're using the words monopoly and democratic more for most of these brands. So except for Google Fonts in this case, uh, I'll just run these really quick. Creative market, see like type designers are using the words monopoly and democratic more. Still very small numbers, but they're using them more than everyone else. Very interesting, right? There's not a lot we can draw from this is like an easy kind of conclusion we can wrap in a bow, but it, it's something to think about, right? How do type designers, using these words means maybe there's some governmental view of, of our distributors, I'm not sure. Uh, segments, I have this idea, I've been kind of playing with in my mind, and I finally have some great data that I feel ready to present it to you all. So if we take this axis and on the y-axis we put volume of customers and on the x-axis we put the value in money. Um, I want to plot the life cycle of a font customer. First, people need to discover that fonts exist. Then they start and they appear on this map. Step one, whether that's in Microsoft Word in the drop down, they see a meme about a font, they read a Kanye tweet, right? They discover fonts exist. Next step, they download a free font, whether that's legally or illegally. We've got them, we've got them hooked. So they use this font, they either realize they need a different license, they're non-compliant, they realize that the free font is in high quality, they download more free fonts, they're realizing that there's more out there, maybe they want to, they just step it up, right? They're comfortable with buying free fonts, now they're willing to spend money on them. They purchase their first font. Okay, so these, these dots are going down because there's fewer and fewer people taking this to the next level, but their value is going up. Then they become a customer that purchases fonts regularly, even better, but there's fewer of those people. Then we have people who need different licenses. That's the next step. Finally, we get to the point where people are valuing type, where we want people to be, but there's not that many of us. And I think that font subscription falls here, in the middle. Um, I don't think it's at the very end, and I don't think it's at the very beginning, based on the data I'm going to show you. I can use this question to roughly map our customer groups to my little map, right? How many individual fonts do you purchase in a year on average? It's gonna be a lot of information. So, we'll start at the beginning. I only download free fonts. Got my nice little handy notes here. You'll see that 39% are not sure if they have OpenType software. 
Most people are needing per personal use licenses. We see that our skill level curve is distributed this way towards the lower skill levels. 19% know a type designer, 5% are type designers, 59% pay for a video or music subscription. These red boxes, those are the lowest numbers you're going you're to see. Green boxes are the highest numbers you're going to see today. 31% agree that font licensing is confusing. 47% agree that fonts are too expensive. 56% are casual users, and 52% do not know about variable fonts. So we'll take it to the next level, one to 10 fonts. Normally distributed skill level, 60% say they do have software with open type, and most people are needing desktop licenses. The number for people who know type designers has gone up. More people are type designers in this category. We've jumped from 59 to 73% of people who pay for a music or video subscription. Fewer people think font licensing is confusing. Fewer people think fonts are too expensive. The casual user's number is dropping, and people who don't know about variable fonts is dropping. And the trend continues in this group. Desktop licenses are going up. More people are having open type software. Skill level is shifting. And the rest of the numbers are following the same pattern. Getting even more fonts. Lots of open type use. Extended licenses is getting a little higher. Skill level is still shifting toward advanced. And we can see that we've now got some, some numbers here that are somewhat similar to the previous slide, but going up and down in, in these ways. Now, more than 50 fonts. Now, extended licenses is, is higher than web fonts. Um, and you can see that at this small, it's only 420 people in this group, but it's enough to, to put these numbers here. Um, and you can see how they've shifted, right? 78% are paying for a music or video subscription. But that changes when people who say they have a font subscription service, these are the people that 83% are paying for a music or video subscription. This is the group that needs the most license, web font licenses and the skill level has backed down to be more normally distributed. So if we go back to our chart, simplified, we want to get people from discovering fonts exist to valuing type. But this is going down. So we need to come up with ways to make valuing type go up. And we can do that with three things, type education, font awareness, and user experience. So when I talk about type education, I'm not just talking about people who want to learn about fonts. It's about educating people who may not be going out and seeking font education. How do we educate people about type in a seamless, non-conflicting way, right? How do they experience this type education? Because if people are already going out looking for type education, they're good, they're gonna find it, right? We need to get, get people at another level. Font awareness, right, this is really big. There's so many people out there that could take advantage of fonts, use them to grow their company, make more money for their company. There's a lot, we all know the benefits of fonts here, right? Getting font awareness up is key. And the last one, user experience, is not about a UX designer. It's about every step of the process. Putting the customer first, designing our websites in a way that are easy to use, creating customer support that is seamless, right? There's the user experience, getting people into the funnel, getting them to buy more type. If it's easier to do it, they're gonna do it because they're gonna fall in love with fonts. These are my three takeaways. If you have any questions, come find me after. Um, thank you so much. <laughs>